Alrighty. Let's see here. Alright. Happy birthday, Mom. Let's see. I like to switch colors sometimes. Maybe I'll draw. Oh man, I misspelled birthday. Gosh. Oh, I don't have any more green paper. Let's see. Oh, I know. Maybe I'll cover it up with some of this, and I'll just cut out a piece and tape it over there, and I can write birthday on the purple. How much purple am I gonna need? Let's see here. Let me just measure here. Oh, uh oh. The ruler doesn't start at zero. And there's no one. How am I going to know how long to make it? Oh. I don't have another ruler. Well, let's see. Isn't it still one inch from three to four? So maybe if I started at three, I could just count the number of inches. Let's try that. Let's see. The birthday is... Let's see. I would make it a whole inch. I could make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. 10 minus 3 is 7, and it's 7 inches wide. Huh. I wonder if that makes a difference. The end number minus the first number. 10 minus, seven, 10 minus 3 is 7, and 3 minus 10 is 7. Well, negative 7, but absolute value. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Let me cut out a 7-inch piece of paper. Let's see here. Um... Right on ten. Okay. And start on three. One on ten with that. Okay. There. My mom's gonna have the fanciest card this side of the Mississippi. A little bit of tape. Alright. Love you, Mom. Look at that. Only had to cut once. Nice. Welcome back. Today we're talking about segment length. And as we saw in that little intro, you can use a ruler to measure length. But sometimes you're not going to be starting right at 1 or 0. And so when we use the ruler postulate, we're figuring out how we can measure things when we're not measuring from 1 or 0. You see I have a couple of different rulers here. And if I just randomly mark somewhere out in the middle of the ruler, it is really easy to see that this segment would be 8 millimeters or 8 whatever's long. It could be inches, it could be millimeters, it could be feet. It's easy to see that. But sometimes when we stick it out in the middle here like at 4 and 9, right? it's harder to see how long it is. And so this general ruler postulate says the distance of a segment is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So for example, 9 minus 4 would be 5, or, and we could take the absolute value of that, or 4 minus 9 would equal negative 5, and if we take the absolute value of that, either way we get length 5. 
That's not too hard of a concept to understand. Let's apply it to a number line because really isn't a ruler just a number line? See I've got all these numbers on there? It's really just a number line. And so if I'm asking you the length of a segment, the length of a segment kind of looks like this. Length of a segment is shown by letters without a segment above. So this really literally means length of DC because you'll notice it does not have the segment above. Now it ha if it had DC with the segment above that would just be talking about the figure but literally when you just put DC that's asking you to find the length. And so if we do DC we see C and D here and remember of course a segment can be named starting at either end. The coordinates are going to be either 2 minus 4.5 which is negative 2.5 and we'll take the absolute value, so that's 2.5, or 4.5 minus 2 equals 2.5, and if we take the absolute value of that, it's equal to 2.5. So either way, you slice it, DC is 2.5. That's a pretty easy concept to master. Let's look at EF. EF is the same way. Though it is in the negative portion of the number line, we will still find the length, remember of course, no line above means length. The length is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. A little bit trickier here when we have these negatives. So negative 4 minus a negative 1 would be negative 4 plus 1 equals negative 3. And we'll take the absolute value of that to get 3. Or we could say negative 1 minus a negative 4, which is really negative 1 plus 4 is 3 and the absolute value is 3 so the length of that either way you slice it is 3. Side note anytime you see these highlighted problems those are some that you can do and we can talk about in class the next day so go ahead and try these two on your own I've marked x at one and a half here for you so go ahead and try those on your own. We're gonna slide down and talk about congruent segments. Congruent segments could also be shown as congruent with the congruent sign and that's congruent segments it can be said in three ways either we could say PQ congruent to RS and if we use the congruent sign we have to use the little mini labels because we're talking about things being the same size and shape or we could say PQ equals RS, which means the lengths are the same. Or we could say PQ is congruent to RS and we could say it out loud and when we write it it takes a really long time. So we want to use either of those other two ways to mean that they are the same length. We show it in one way and this is the way. Tick marks. Two segments. with the same number of ticks are congruent. So whether I give them one tick mark or two tick marks, it's a matching game. So segments with two tick marks in the same problem would be congruent. Segments with three tick marks, etc., etc. Postulate 1-2-2 is called the segment addition postulate because it's talking about having three points on a line and if I draw a line here and I look at what this postulate is saying it's saying if B 
is between A and C, then AB, this is AB, plus BC, BC, is equal to AC. You can see how this wouldn't be that difficult to understand. For example, if I said 4 and this was 3, we could say AB equals 4, BC equals 3, so 4 plus 3 equals 7, and that would stem from AB plus BC equals AC. Well, AC would be 7 because it's the total length. One part is 4, one part is 3. Not really too difficult. Let's look at a couple of problems here. Oftentimes it's good to draw a picture, and so I've given you this little line here. And once again, it's saying that B is between A and C. And it's saying that AC, so the whole thing, is 14. And BC is 11.4. Well, if we set up that equation again, AB plus BC equals AC. And we plug in what we know. So BC is 11.4. And we know the whole thing is 14. Some unknown quantity, we could call it X, is going to give us AB. Well, we can solve this equation rather easily by subtracting 11.4 from both sides. When we do this, sorry for the poor handwriting, we end up with X is equal to, and we subtract this, and we get 2.6. And if we plugged it back in, we would get our answer. So X is 2.6. Alrighty, what if we had something that had some X's with it? Maybe I won't scroll down, I'll stay up here because this will, this will give us an example of what we're looking at. It's still the same for the equation because the segment addition postulate is still true though we use an X. Because S is between R and T, we can say that RS plus ST is equal to RT. And I'll just plug in. RS is 2X plus 7 plus ST, which is 28, is equal to 4X. Well, I don't know if you recognize this kind of a thing, but this is an algebraic equation. And so I need to combine like terms. So I can say 2X plus 35 is equal to 4X. And I'll subtract 2X from both sides, attempting to solve for X. 35 equals 2X. I can divide by 2. And I end up with 2x equals 35 over 2 over 2. x is equal to 17.5. Well, am I done? No, because I'm trying to find rt. And so rt equals 2x plus 7. And so I'll plug this x in. 2 times 17.5 plus 7 is 35 plus 7 equals 42. And this 4x would be equal to 70, because that would be 4 times 17.5, so that would be 35 times 2. So this is supposed to be equal to 42. Well, is 42 plus 28 equal to 70? Yes. So I checked my answer by plugging back in what I got for x. Here are two for you to try. I would like for you to try these two on your own, and if you have any questions about them, please ask in class. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.